In this video, we'll show you how to install white reflective material in different types of ways so that you can do it in the best way possible. There are many trade names and common names that refer to the material that we are talking about today. So for the purpose of this video, I will only be using generic names such as white fabric or tarps. An overview of the topics regarding white reflective material that we will cover today are the purpose of white reflective fabric, what to look for when buying fabric, discussing if fabric or tarps is a substitute for summer printing, different ways on rolling out and rolling up the tarps, proper tying and securing, discussion about when the tarps should be out in relation to harvest time, and rolling up your tarps and long-term storage. Let's start by talking about the purpose of white reflective fabric or tarps. Now, the reason, which is probably the most obvious, is that the material should increase the color of the fruit and in turn increase the value of the apples. Now, reasons that may be less obvious are that the fruit may be able to be picked sooner due to the increased color on the fruit and in turn make your apples last longer in storage. And another reason is that you may be able to reduce the amount of picks that a particular variety requires and save on labor costs and extra time needed at harvest. Installing fabric is certainly an additional step that takes time and money, and it may not be the correct choice for all growers in all cases, but when used correctly and in the right situations, it can certainly increase the crop value. If you have decided that a reflective fabric is right for your farm, the next question on your mind should probably be, which fabric should I buy? There are several companies with quite a few different products that are available on the market today. So here are some of the most important things to know. First of all, don't confuse one-time use reflective foil materials with proper multi-use white reflective materials. Scientific research has definitely shown that shiny metal looking foil materials in many cases actually cause certain storage scald problems. This is because the sun's rays are directly reflected, similar to a mirror, rather than diffusing the sunlight and then reflecting the sun's light as with the white material. Be cautious of materials that are very porous or have a very loose weave. These materials did not perform as well in trials as the tight weave, flat type fabrics. Now that we have concluded that white material is best, the next question is, which product should I buy? Now there are quite a few options, but here are some key points. Price point is a main factor for most farmers. And buying white reflective fabric is most often no different than buying other items. You will most likely get what you paid for. Very inexpensive, light-duty fabrics will often only last a season or two, while heavy-duty, tight-weave fabrics, if treated properly, can last five years or more. If you have the ability to buy a product that is of good quality at a reasonable price, you'll be in good shape. Another factor to consider is if you want to have the option of driving equipment over the tarps. If so, I would certainly suggest the heavier material. The width of the tarp should be wide enough to hopefully cover about 80% of the row from tree to tree, as you will need some wiggle room from each group of trees on either side. For example, if your rows are 10 feet wide, do not buy tarps that are also 10 feet wide, as it will be a headache to try to install and roll up the tarps. Figure out how many rows you have in total and the lengths of each row and then do the math to figure out how many rolls you will need. Now a common size is approximately 250 feet or roughly 80 meters, but make sure you confirm your manufacturer's roll size before you place the order. There are other items that you will have to consider when buying white reflective tarps, such as clips or fasteners, ropes or bungee cords, PVC pipe, golf balls, torches, tape, and application equipment, such as a roller machine, to make handling the tarps less labor intensive. Make sure that you get a quote on all the equipment you need before deciding on which system to go with, as the costs in addition to the tarps for extra parts can add up. A short answer to the question of whether white reflective tarps can take the place of summer pruning is no. 
Having said that, a smart grower may be able to reduce the amount of summer pruning by using a growth regulator, such as Apogee, and then get away with a much quicker summer pruning job before or after applying the reflective tarps. There are many different ways that these tarps can be handled, and some ways are certainly easier than others. Now if budget is your number one concern, and you have the extra time, perhaps you may choose to roll the tarps out by hand, but keep in mind that they are often harder to roll back up than roll out. Also, without multiple people, it can be difficult to roll the tarps uphill. Now if you don't want to foot the bill for a hydraulic or electric roller machine, perhaps building a metal roller dispenser that you can pull behind your golf cart, ATV, or tractor is more what you're thinking. Now this method works quite well, but the main challenge will be when you have to roll the tarps back up at the end of the season. By far, the most preferred method of dispensing and rolling back up the tarps is using an automated roller machine. Although the initial capital outlay is more, time and extra back-breaking work will be saved. Because these rolls of tarps are often very heavy, it is best to make use of multiple pieces of machinery, if available. Now for this example, you will need one tractor with the roller machine installed on the three-point hitch, and a separate tractor with forks. Since the rolls are heavy, it is best to use forks to lift the rolls onto the dispenser machine. If you maneuver the tractor just right, you can actually almost entirely eliminate the need to lift the rolls by hand. After the plastic bearing is in place, it's time to start rolling out the tarps. If it's not too windy, of course. Now keep in mind that these long rolls of tarps act like a gigantic boat sail. So check the weather forecast. Now it's time to drive down to the orchard rows where we will be applying the tarps and get started. Double check that you have all the tools and supplies required, such as pre-made bungee cord lengths with hooks already applied, golf balls or something similar to that size, a blowtorch or hot knife, a utility knife or other very sharp knife, measuring tape, spray paint or large permanent marker, extremely strong vapor barrier sheathing tape, and ratchet and socket with the proper wrenches for the roller machine. Let's make sure our reflective fabric or tarp is centered as close as possible to the row, and then let's get rolling. Now remember, the safety of you and your workers is always first. When operating any machinery, wear proper clothing that is not baggy, and keep a safe distance from all moving parts that could potentially hurt you. You will need at least two people to dispense the tarps efficiently using the roller machine. One operator should stand by the actuator valve so that the speed can be adjusted or stopped when necessary, and the other worker or workers should be responsible for guiding the tarp down each row so that minimal adjustment needs to be made when fastening the bungee cords after the tarp is fully pulled out of each row. Now that the tarp is pulled down the entire length of one row, it's time to cut the tarp. You can cut the tarp with a regular utility knife, but then you'll have to singe the ends anyway. Otherwise, most of the tarps will start fraying almost immediately. I prefer to actually use a hand torch to cut the fabric, as it singes the plastic weave at the same time and reduces a step. Now another option is to use a hot knife to cut the tarp, which also singes the edges as well. But remember, if you're using a torch, be careful not to light any dry grass or twigs on fire. Cut the tarp back in the row at least three or four feet away from the main road or edge of the adjacent row. This will give you more room when using other roadways and using farm implements. Once the tarps are rolled up and put away in storage, there is no way of telling which row they were custom cut for in the previous year. Now most orchards have many different row lengths, so make sure you label each tarp on both ends with either spray paint or a permanent marker before you forget. Now before the wind picks up, we better get our tarp tied down. And one important tip in regard to the wind is to make sure the tarp is attached to the first end and then pulled tight before the rest of the bungees are attached down the row. Loose tarps flap in the wind and create lift, which is not a good thing. Tying the tarps down correctly is probably one of the most important jobs, so let's get to it. We will need a large number of bungee cords and hooks or golf balls for fastening the tarps to the trees or posts. Most often, the bungee cords and hooks are not pre-fitted to one another or the tarps, so 
you will have to pre-cut the lengths to suit your particular orchard. Now the examples I am using refer to an orchard that has a 2 foot by 10 foot tree spacing, or 60 centimeters by 3 meters. If you have a different tree spacing, make sure you recalculate the numbers to suit your orchard. Now I usually cut each bungee cord approximately 5 feet long, or 1.5 meters. Now I recommend that you use bungees to attach the tarp at every end, of course, and then also at least every 20 feet, or approximately 6 meters, on each side going down the row. Now don't cheap out on this step. Gathering tarps on your neighbor's property after a windstorm is not a fun task. Once the bungee cords have been cut to length, make sure that they are properly singed with a torch so that fraying can be minimized. Putting a ball underneath the tarp and then wrapping the bungee cord like this around the ball and tarp takes a bit of extra time, but it works very well in securing the tarp and reduces the potential of tearing or ripping. If you don't tie it down the first time, you can always take a mulligan. There are multiple styles of hooks, but most of them work in a similar way. If hooks are your preferred method, I recommend doubling up on the tarp end to add strength where the hooks go through, and also put the hooks into the tarp on two separate spots to increase the surface area where the hooks are stretching the tarp to reduce the chance of tearing. Now I would also recommend placing the hooks at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters away from the edge of the tarps. As you can see, these metal hooks have two contact points, and these plastic ones only have one contact point. Some manufacturers have a reinforced weave on the edges to place the hooks through, and some don't. But when in doubt, follow the manufacturer's specifications and guidelines. Now there are pros and cons to which height you choose when attaching the tarps to the tree trunks or posts. Now if you choose to attach your bungees up at a higher height, such as 2 feet or 60 centimeters, you will get more airflow under the grass, and possibly slightly more light into the bottom of the fruit canopy. The problem that can arise with this method is that high winds can put extra stress on the tarps and tie downs. Now if you choose to attach your bungees at ground level and the orchard floor is often very wet, there could be mold or mildew that forms on the tarps. However, wind may be less of an issue. Now in my experience, I have found that about 8 inches or 10 centimeters is just about right with all issues considered. There are also many ways to tie the bungees to the trees or posts. But I have found that this method of only pulling the cord behind the tree or post and then putting the hooks in at least two locations is very quick and also works very well. It is possible to forego the bungees and hooks and just shovel dirt or place rocks on the edges of the tarps to weigh them down, but this can be very difficult, time consuming, and a messy process. Also, keep in mind that shoveling dirt or rocks on the edge of the tarps can make them less reflective and therefore make them less effective for doing the job they were designed to do, which is reflect the sun's light and ultimately help with coloring up the fruit. Now unless no other option is available, I would certainly not recommend securing the tarp with dirt or rocks. In regards to timing of when the tarp should be put out in relation to harvest time, remember that it is usually best to lean on the side of longer than shorter. Now in a very minimum amount of time before harvest, assuming ideal conditions, is about three weeks. But in most cases, it is beneficial to have the tarps out at least four weeks or more before harvest to get optimum benefits out of your material. Now it is possible to set up the tarps for more than one type of crop in a season, providing the crops you're dealing with have a maturity date that is far enough apart. Maximizing your potential of your investment can pay off with careful consideration. It is certainly possible to walk on the tarps and still have them down when harvest is happening, but it's not ideal. If you're short on time during harvest and don't have the time to roll up the tarps properly, you can untie one side of the bungees and secure them to the other side. Keep in mind though that you will have to ultimately pull the tarps back out into the flat position when rolling them up later. Now the best method is to properly roll up the tarps right before harvest. And there are some important factors that need to be considered when it is time to do this task. Use quality tape with good adhesion when attaching the tarp to the PVC pipe. I have found that if tape is not used, the tarp will have a tendency to spin freely on the PVC pipe and you won't be able to continue to wind up any more tarp on that particular roll. Be aware that if the tarps are wet on either side when rolled up, 
Mold or mildew may develop during storage, since the rolls will be wrapped up tight. If at all possible, roll the tarps up when they are dry. Also, if it happens to be windy, it will be much more difficult to keep the tarps straight when trying to put the tarps back onto the roll. Now, there is a little trick in regards to rolling up the tarps in a light wind. Place one or two pieces of heavy PVC pipe about 5 feet or 1.5 meters away from the roller on the ground between two trees or posts. The pipe will keep the tarp from flipping up on one side or the other and help guide the tarp back onto the roll. Speaking of PVC pipe, I find it most helpful to cut multiple pieces of Schedule 40 2 inch PVC pipe and then use those pipes to wrap the tarps back onto at the end of the season. Now often, manufacturers use cardboard pipe to roll the tarp onto at the factory, which is not waterproof. And the other bonus of rolling up your own rolls is that you can decide to make each roll have less material on it and actually reduce the weight on that roll. And therefore, make the rolls for next year much easier to handle. The tarp edge can actually be quite sharp, so wear sturdy gloves that are very strong. Now once the tarps are all rolled up, secured with tape on the outside and labeled, it's time to put them to bed for the season. If at all possible, I recommend storing the tarps under cover to reduce the chance that they will develop mold or mildew. Keep in mind too that rodents often like to find convenient little homes where possible. So try not to make things favorable for these little creatures. Storing the rolls upright in a dry location is the preferred method. Reflective row coverings do cost money and do take time to install but can certainly help to increase the value of your crops for many harvests in the future. If quality and consistency is what you're after year after year, this product can add value if used correctly. Now, if you like this video, check out our other professional videos, such as apple thinning, picking, or pruning like a pro with Steve Brown. And don't forget to comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching.